Hey guys, welcome back. It is Friday, time for another episode of Trucker Money, where we talk about all things money outside of trucking, personal finance, investing, retirement, side income, passive income, anything, but trucking is off the table. Sunday through, well, Saturday through Thursday can be all trucking all the time, but we gotta have one day a week where we take a break, break from it. Really starting to look forward to doing these Friday videos. It's not like, oh crap, it's Friday, I gotta do another video. It's like, oh man, it's Friday, I get to do another video. So I really like talking about this stuff and uh, I don't feel like it's productive and useful. So before we get into every week, I like to recap kind of what I made on the side away from trucking or any, any investments I made, stuff like that. Uh, but first I like to talk about some kind of topic uh, this week I want to talk about do you have what it takes to to build wealth and what do I mean by that well I'm not I'm not I don't like the cheerleading the gurus not that I think they're wrong but but I don't like to have a guru I mean I, I like Dave Ramsey uh, I like a lot of what he says I you know has some slight disagreements with him on a couple things but uh, I like him but but I, I don't want to worship at the altar of Dave Ramsey or uh, Robert Kiyosaki or any of these people uh, I want to I want my thoughts to be my own and my successes to be my own and my mistakes to be my own otherwise you're just it's like being in a cult you know not that I don't I don't I do like these people I value what they have to say but having what it takes to, to build wealth and to to manage your own money to provide for your family, to, to really do something with your life is is not as hard as they make it. You know, politicians and the media like to turn us all against each other, and oh, you're never going to get ahead because of these evil rich people. You're never going to get ahead because of these evil corporations, or this reason or that reason, or because uh, he's a one percenter. And uh, but you know what the truth is? The truth is that as long as they have us fighting with each other and hating each other and blaming each other they're hoping that we won't notice how bad they're screwing us and that's the truth about 10 years ago let's share something with you from my life about 10 years ago i decided you know what enough of this i do not i have not watched the news read a newspaper any of that crap in about 10 years, I, I, I catch maybe a minute here and there of headlines, you know, when you're walking past the TV somewhere where they have it on. Other than that, no. And I, and I can honestly say it drastically improved my, my quality of life. Uh, when, you, when you do that, you start to realize how much you're lied to. You can start to see the truth everywhere, form your own opinions, and your, your, your BS detector goes to a whole new level. Uh, so think about that. Now, having what it takes to become wealthy. What is it? What does it take? Well, some people want to be your cheerleader and you know follow my program and get up and do this and do that. I hate that. I don't like cheerleaders. I like I like doers, people who are doers. And well, what do I mean by that? Well, the first. I thought of a couple things here to see if you have what it takes. The first thing is, is bother to care. Bother to give a damn. Most people don't care enough to take an active role in their own personal finance. They just take it, oh, well, I got paid Friday, it's write out the bills, and then what's left over, we can do whatever. Bother to care. Do a budget. Have a plan. I tell you what. A mediocre plan that is executed and followed nine times out of ten will beat up a, a great plan the best plan in the world but you don't do it the best plan in the world is no good if you don't act on it you're better off with a mediocre plan that that you're consistent and execute so why should you bother to care well think about your grandparents if, if you went to your 80 year old grandparent and said do you wish you would have done things different with money now there's different kinds of grandparents some of them are very wealthy and they travel a lot and give money away but there's also ones that have never really had anything and they they pass away in a state-run nursing home being mistreated and 
nobody visiting them and just not having anything. That's that's unfortunate. If, if you'd ask your grandparent like that, why you should bother to care, they'd probably say, "Look, look at look at my life. I just went through life, paying the bills, getting by, uh, and and this is where I am in life. I'm I'm 80 and I have to live in a state-run nursing home because I can't support myself." And there's a lot of reasons for that. It's not always through uh, fault of somebody's own. You know, people get sick. People have uh, terrible things happen to them in their life. I'm just talking, you know, in general in life. Uh, we don't generally need to look too far away from our, our direct family to, to find instances of that. So don't do that to your kids, uh, your loved ones, your, your descendants. You can make some changes and provide them a great life even after you're gone. And, and provide a great life with yourself so when you're older you can have some dignity. Uh, it's, it's, it's our choice. The second thing I would say it takes is, is you want to improve your financial IQ every day. Read a book, uh, find a financial term and study it, learn a definition. Uh, there's, there's a book that I like, going back to the gurus, uh, yeah, Dave Ramsey has good books, Robert Kiyosaki has good books, there's good books all over the place. I like one in particular, it's called The Millionaire Next Door by Dr. Thomas Stanley. And he did a, a study of millionaires in this country, and I'm not talking about celebrities or pro athletes or these people that if they couldn't make a basket, they'd be nothing in life. It's your average millionaire, your small business owners, the people that have uh, saved and invested well their whole lives, the, the, the people you would never suspect are very wealthy, and he goes through every detail of their life and, and how they do things. It's, it's very inspirational to see that they're people just like me and you. They make similar incomes, yet they've built a, a great level of wealth, millions of dollars, just because of their behavior. Uh, so I prefer to read books like that than a book that tells you, uh, you know, get out of debt, that this stuff we all should know anyway. Uh, that's a great book. And then after that, there's one called The Millionaire Mindset, which is also by Thomas Stanley. The third thing, is maturity and getting control of your emotions related to money. That might even be the biggest thing. Uh, it is gaining control of your, your emotions related to money. To be able to resist when you see, oh, ooh, look at that car. Wow, I gotta have one of them. Or I gotta have that jacked up $45,000 pickup truck with the big tires and the fender flares and the, Hey man, it's just a truck. Uh, it, w once you can get past all that, that's a sign that you really have a, a level of, of calmness and maturity, and that and that you're uh, ah, dog on phone. It's a sign of uh, of getting control of your emotions and, and maturity that you can you can therefore, if you have a plan laid out, you can execute that plan. And when times are good and times are bad, you'll say well things are bad right now should i really be investing but then you'll say to yourself you know what i have this plan i'm sticking to the plan and a plan that is stuck to doesn't even have to be the best plan in the world uh, you'll still likely succeed that's a big deal consistency and determination to, to get things done and and you need to be a doer we can sit around and, and say, well, I'll start investing when I get this better job that pays me more money or when I get my house paid for or when I get the kids college or, or what have you. Start now. Get some skin in the game. Time is your biggest ally in, in investing and building wealth. If you start with a lot of time, you don't need to invest a lot of money. Uh, so, so get some skin in the game. And also, have, even if you put a couple thousand dollars You'll start watching it and paying attention and what's happening and you'll you'll start learning and make your mistakes before you are into it for a huge amount of money. Um, sure, there's a lot of other things that go along with that, but I just want to keep it short. And If you get a, a grasp on those few things, hey, really honestly, that's, that's the biggest thing is your behavior and to, to do things. You know, what investments you, you, you buy and get into, yeah, you don't want to get into crap and junk, but uh, just just doing something is the key here. So I'm not going to go too far into that and drag it out for a long time, but uh, 
just think about that. Now, let's talk about the week of July 27th through the 31st. As most of you know, I'm, I'm, I like to uh, invest in, in dividend paying stocks. I, I'm a dividend investor, an income investor, more so than growth, because I like to have an income coming in so that when times get bad, or if times do get bad, uh, I have something to fall back on. Uh, once again, this is not investing advice. This is just me sharing what I do in hopes of motivating and inspiring you to, to form a plan and follow it. Whatever. Hey, let me tell you a quick story. Uh, I just recently saw a YouTube video of a, of a gentleman. He was retirement age. Never made more than $12, $12 an hour his whole life. He was some kind of security guard. But his plan is he was just going to save pennies his whole life. He saved every penny he ever got. He'd pick up pennies on the street, and he got to be known as the penny guy. So people would save their pennies and bring him their pennies. And he had these big tubs at home that he would put his pennies in. Never really cash them in. So retirement rolls around. And he's like, all right, well, let's see how my plan did and what I got. Turns out he had 850-some thousand dollars in pennies, just from saving pennies. That's not a great plan. That's a mediocre plan at best. But look where it got him. He, he, he stuck to it, and he did it, and he executed it. People saw what he was doing. They helped him out. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be hard to get rich from pennies, but people get rich doing anything. They just execute it and follow it and do it so anyway the week of 27 to the 31st so I got some great news this week uh, I got two dividend increases I love dividend increases it makes me very happy when I get a raise for doing nothing other than being a loyal shareholder first one was from Unilever ticker symbol UL there's two ways to buy Unilever UN and UL I prefer UL I'm gonna go into that right now. We'll, we'll go over the. Uh, we'll go over that someday in another video. Uh, they raise their dividend three cents, uh, which is ends up being 5.6 percent dividend increase for Unilever. And then the other one was Altria, ticker symbol M O. They raise their dividend 2.38 percent, which is two cents. The, unit, the, the, the Altria one was not expecting. It's a, This is a little earlier than I think they would normally announce uh, a dividend increase for the year. So I wasn't really expecting that. Uh, what did I buy this week? Well, just in, in celebration of uh, them giving me a raise and being a loyal shareholder, I bought a little bit more of Altria. Current yield is 8.27%, which is high. I would normally, if I wasn't already in it, I probably wouldn't get in it at that rate because it rates uh, uh, yields in that eight and higher percent. A lot of times that's a yield trap. They can't pay it, but Altria can pay it. They're a great company. They're one of the best performing stocks of all time. They've, they've spun off so many companies, Craft uh, and, and things like that. Uh, just a great company. Tough time right now. They're still dealing with the jewel situation with the lawsuits and stuff, but I think they're gonna come out of that okay most of the problems they had with those smokeless uh tobacco things were off brands they weren't actually jewel they were knockoffs so i think altria is probably going to be okay with that they're dealing with it right now and dealing with it well so who paid this week well this would be trucker money number 12 so 12 consecutive weeks uh ltc properties which is ticker symbol ltc paid they pay their monthly payer you hear that name once a month 5.88% current yield. They are a REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust, which they've been hit kind of hard by this whole thing going on here. Crazy times we live in. Uh, it's a smaller position in my portfolio. And then Toronto Dominion Bank, ticker symbol TD. Uh, I have a fairly sizable position in that. Current yield of 5.22%. Banks have also been hit hard by this uh, thing going on right now. So. Um, I only contribute new money to that when I when I see it's a, a deep value and kind of being real skeptical of the, the banking system right now. Although I do personally prefer Canadian banks over U.S. banks um, for different reasons, some of which we'll get into someday maybe. But uh, just wanted to go over... Oh, we'll know that'll be for next week. Um, just wanted to go over that week of uh, July 27th through the 31st. 
glad to see July getting over with here. August is uh, going to be uh, a better month. We'll have uh, more income coming in. And uh, next week, I hope to, to talk about something cool that has happened, kind of unintentionally. And uh, hopefully it does. And it will turn out that I did something smart completely by accident. So I always like that too. So if you like this kind of thing, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. And uh, we will see you next week.